Hello again, everyone. Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube NFL prediction segment, I am going to be giving you my picks and analysis uh, predictions for week four of the 2018 NFL season. So anyway, first game. Well, I'm going to go with the Rams at home over the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, the Rams, to me, seem like the, mo the supreme team right now. They seem to be just have virtually no uh, weaknesses or deficiencies. They're number three in total offense uh, and also number one in scoring defense, giving up 12 points per game. Most complete team right now. They are at home. Minnesota looked deplorable last week. I mean, only scoring six points, getting annihilated by Buffalo. I think they're going to be revved up and they'll have much incentive to play better and that they will put on a much better performance, but I still think it's going to result in a loss. Who would have thought that the Minnesota Vikings might actually be 1-2-1 one, and one after four weeks? I do believe that's what their record will be after four weeks, unfortunately, for Kirk Cousins and company. Uh, I do like the Rams to win uh, this one at home. Next game. I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons at home to defeat the Cincinnati Bengals. Atlanta has won three consecutive versus the Bengals at Atlanta. Uh, wide receiver Julio Jones, I think, could have a very big game against the Cincinnati Bengals secondary. Cincinnati Bengals secondary is number uh, like 24 in pass defense. I mean, the pass defense is ranked like number 24 in the NFL right now. So the Bengals are also uh, putrid one and four and out of conference uh, game since 2017. Wide receiver AJ Green, his status is questionable. I don't know as far as Joe Mixon, I think his may be as well. So when you're looking at all those things, the fact Cincinnati has to go on the road to play Atlanta. And Atlanta came with a very tough loss last week. I think they're going to redeem themselves. I do believe they will win at home. Next game. Well, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise for some of you out there. I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears to win at home over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Chicago has almost surreptitiously compiled a 2 and one record. I know it's only three games, but they won their last two contests. They did everything but defeat Green Bay in week one. They had that game. They just couldn't finish the job in the second half. Now, I mean, the Chicago defense has been relentless with the uh, addition of Quill, uh, uh Mack. I mean... They are, uh, they're averaging just, uh, I mean, this is a team where their, their defense, they got four, they're leading the NFL 14 defensive sacks. They also have seven forced fumbles and are also, um, allowing just about 18 points per game right now. Tampa Bay, yes, they look more impressive. They had two very good wins to start the season. They came a little bit short last week against Pittsburgh. I um, mean, I, who knows who the quarterback's going to be. I think it's probably going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think he's done enough to retain this position right now. Uh, he did have three INTs last week. He showed certain vulnerability. I think Tampa Bay might be starting to plummet to earth a little bit in Chicago right now. I think they're thinking, you know, they got certain swagger. I think they got some confidence right now. And I do believe they will take this one in a close one. I think their defense will be a little bit better than Tampa Bay's offense. I think that's going to be the difference. I like the Bears at home. Next game. I'm going to take uh, the Dallas Cowboys at home over the Detroit Lions. I know everything seems to point to the Lions to, to come out and win this one. They're playing better than Dallas right now. Dallas is only averaging 13.7 uh, points per game. Sean Lee's status is questionable. I do believe what's going to happen. A lot of people are talking about this. I've heard Stephen A. say this on first take. And I believe there's some other number of other sources where this is coming from that. It's paramount that Ezekiel Elliott gets more touches. I think he will get this. I think they're being, given the fact they're going to be at home, I think they want to redeem themselves and bounce back from uh, last week's really very bad performance. Detroit Lions, they had like their first 100-yard rusher last week in like 71 games, and that's almost unfathomable to go that long without a 100-yard rusher. Perhaps it's a good harbinger of things to come for this team to have better uh, a better running attack. I think what's happening right now, I think uh, what, what, what it is is that they're starting to adapt to uh, head coach Mike Patricia's system. I, in the first game against the Jets, when they got throttled, I think there was some issues trying to follow up on what uh, 
what my Patricia wanted them to do. I think now if there were any issues with that, they apparently are resolved. Detroit, I wouldn't be surprised if they go in and win this game actually, but I'm just going to go with Dallas uh, in this one, mainly just because they're at home. And I think that's going to just be just enough uh, difference. I think Ezekiel Elliott's going to be playing better and getting more touches. And I think that will be good enough for them to win. I like Dallas at home next game. I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers to win at home over the Buffalo Bills. Now, Green Bay, I mean, their Achilles heel right now, of course, is their, their defense. They're allowing about 28 points per game. I think they gave up 41 last week to the Redskins. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers, his status, I would say, is questionable. He was having some knee issues or something. And uh, it wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually sit him in this game, given they... Green Bay, I'm sure, feels confident that they could beat Buffalo at home, even though Buffalo had a very impressive win last week, annihilating the Minnesota Vikings on the road. I think they had like 27 or 24 of their those points in that first half, actually. Now, Buffalo's allowed 14 sacks. I think um, in this particular uh, game, Buffalo might have a letdown in this one. And even if Green Bay starts their second string quarterback, they should be able uh, to win this one at Green Bay. I do like the Green Bay Packers in this one at home to win at home. Next game. Well, I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles on the road to beat the Tennessee Titans. Now, Philadelphia, I mean, they have won. They have been somewhat unimpressive this season. They don't seem to really resemble that team that won Super Bowl last year. However, they have had a propensity to win ugly games. They are 2-1. and one. Barely got by the Colts last week. They, the quarterback, um, Carson Wentz, was sacked five times. But, I mean, a win is a win regardless whether it's ugly or or it's impressive or it's a, it's a blowout or annihilation or whatever, or it's a close game. Tennessee... I mean, it's hard for me to uh, to believe they're actually uh, right now number four scoring defense in the NFL, allowing 16.7 points per game. Two and one came off a very impressive win against the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. I think they're actually this should be a competitive game given that Tennessee is at home. It's an unfamiliar opponent for both teams given it's an out of conference game. I don't see a blowout either way, but I am going to go with the Eagles. Uh, in this one, just a um, simple fact, they just have a little bit better personnel, I think, than the Titans right now. And the Titans, even though they won last week, they only scored nine points. And I think what, what, what it is for me, their defense is solid, but I'm just concerned whether they're going to score enough points to beat the Eagles in this game. And I don't know if it's going to be quarterback Mariota or they're going to go with someone else. But whatever it is, I do, th do like the Philadelphia Eagles to win this one in a tight game. Next game, I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts to win at home over the Houston Texans. Now, uh, I mean, for the Colts right now, they have looked, talk about unimpressive, they have not really looked that good. I mean, they have uh, one of the bright spots, of course, having Andrew Luck and then linebacker Dar uh, Darius Leonard, who is leading the NFL, 41 tackles right now. Indianapolis just 3-6 and six at home since 2007, but Houston is 1-9 and nine on the road since 2007. So Houston's a little bit worse on the road in that span than Indy is at home. And they, Houston has also been dominated by Indianapolis in the series in recent time. They have lost 8 of the last 11 to Indianapolis, given it's at the Colts, I do like the Colts to win this one in a tight game. The Colts did, uh, even though they lost West last week, they played uh, the Super Bowl champion Eagles in a very competitive matchup, played them very well. I think they're good enough to beat a struggling Houston team right now that is 0-3 and is certainly underachieved for the season. So I'm going to take the Colts at home. Next game, well, I'm going to take New England Patriots to win at home over the Miami Dolphins. Now, New England right now, I mean, I understand it's just three games, but one and two, they have definitely, I mean, you have all this, um, people speculating, I'm sure, is Tom Brady's skills deteriorating. Max Kellerman might be wondering, well, is my prediction maybe coming true, maybe a little bit belated, but this is Tom Brady falling off this cliff that I've talked about. Well, I don't think it's time to quite panic yet. I understand the Patriots. Uh, I mean, Tom Brady only threw for like 133 passing yards last week. I think it's more of an aberration than anything. It's hard to make an analysis on this right now after just 
three games. Now, I mean, I understand if they do lose this game, the Patriots, and they're one and three, that would be the first time they would be one and three in a very long time, even though after four games, there would be a little more cause of concern. But I do believe they will win this game, go two and two on the season. They are seven and two at home since last season. Miami right now, I mean, they have played the Patriots well in recent time. This is going to be at New England, though. I understand Miami 3-0. They have their confidence and swagger. They got seven defensive interceptions right now. The defense has been exceptional, only giving up about 17 points per game. They definitely have confidence going into this game. I don't think they're going to go in in any fear or trepidation of New England. I think they feel probably that New England's more vulnerable right now than they have been in recent time. But it's not, but it's not going... Uh, to be enough, even though New England's defense has not played well, I think it'll get better as the season progresses. I do believe Coach Bill Belichick will get this team to play cohesively and get all the parts working uh, sooner than later. I do like the Patriots to win at home. Hold on a second, people. Sorry about that. Well, the next game, I'm going to take the Jacksonville Jaguars at home to beat the New York Jets. Now, right now, Jacksonville, even though they had an unimpressive performance against the Titans last week when they just scored a robust six points, this is still a team, I believe, that can contend for the AFC title. Perhaps they were a little deflated after uh, defeating uh, the Patriots the week before. This is a team, I mean, that's uh, number two scoring defense right now. And I think they're going to be seeking retribution after losing to the Jets last season. The Jets right now are, have to go into Jacksonville just 2-8 and eight on the road since last season. And really, like in the last seven, last seven regular season games, the Jets have only won game where they scored over 19 points. And, of course, that was week one this season. So, to me, it's something about the Jets' offense which gives skepticism in this one for them. It's just their lack of offense, and I think with Jacksonville, I think their defense is going to play very well against uh, rookie quarterback Sam Darnold. I don't really see the Jets being able to do much offensively in this one, and I do like Jacksonville to uh, win this one and redeem themselves after a really bad performance against the Titans the week before. So, anyway, I take Jacksonville at home. Next game, excuse me, I want to take the Oakland Raiders to win at home over the Cleveland Browns. Uh, right now for Oakland, there I'm sure there's a strong sense of urgency. I understand John Gruden has signed this extensive contract where it's like 10 years. Uh, the thing about it is, I mean, you might have 10 years on a contract, but I'm sure there's still going to be pressure on him to do something, at least in a two or three window, to get this team competitive. Now, they have been getting, they, they've been getting close. Oakland has done everything, but when they could have very, maybe been easily been two and one right now, possibly. But I look at um, the Oakland Raiders. They are, I mean, you talk about a turnover differential, minus four, just one takeaway on the season. Uh, no Khalil Mack, of course, and I think they are really, they may be regretting it, whether Oakland management and John Gruden want to acknowledge it or not. Now, Cleveland right now is coming in on a 10-day rest. Uh, it is a road game for them, of course, but they have showed, even though it's just three games, they have shown some very good signs of progress and improvement, I believe. They have 11 takeaways right now. Uh, they are uh, plus nine turnover differential. The thing about it is it's hard to really envision uh, the Cleveland Browns winning two consecutive and even saying two consecutive wins, Cleveland Browns in the same sentence. Uh, not, It's not exactly improbable. I don't think it's going to happen, though. It's been the last time the Cleveland Browns won consecutive games was in 2014. I just don't think it's going to happen again yet. So I'm going to take Oakland to uh, to get their first win of the season at home. Next game, I'm going to take the Seattle Seahawks to win on the road against the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, you look at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, their defense, of course, is not the same as I've stated in previous videos. It's been dismantled, of course. It's not nearly what it what it had been prior to this season. They still have safety Earl Thomas uh, 
I mean, they were, uh, this is a team that has allowed 14 sacks. They got to give Russell Wilson good protection. I don't think it's going to be much problem against Arizona. Seattle does have seven defensive interceptions, so they still have playmakers, and they have, um, they are a team, I mean, they their their offense is about mediocre right now, averaging about 22 points per game. And but the thing about it is, um, the Arizona is hardly scoring at all. They're averaging about seven points per game right now. It's their dead last in the NFL in scoring offense, and they're also last. Uh, passing yards per game and also in time of possession per game about 24 minutes per game which of course is abysmal there's really not many positive things to look at Arizona and, and really find a scenario where they can win now they might be putting a new quarterback in maybe that could help revive and resuscitate this team give them some new life I just don't think it's going to be enough to give them their first win this season so I like Seattle to win on the road next game I'm going to take the New Orleans Saints on the road to defeat the New York Giants. Uh, New Orleans last week had a very good win uh, against the Atlanta Falcons. It was an offensive uh, scoring uh, game, uh, seesaw battle between them and Atlanta. Really to, this in, really, to summarize what New Orleans is about, they're just about all offense and, and basically not, not much defense. It's like they had been... In recent previous seasons, it seemed like the defense was going to get better for the Saints, but right now it's all seemed to be predicated on their offense. They got Michael Thomas, a receiver on the team that is having a standout season. You don't really, I haven't really heard much talk about him, but he's actually, I mean, he's got 38 receptions right now after three games on 40 targets. So, I mean, that is phenomenal ratio right there. I mean, he is really, I mean, he's, I mean Michael, Tom, Michael Thomas is just, I mean, let's say he's just a flat-out beast. But the team is averaging nearly 35 points per game. The Giants have surprised some people, including me, by going into Houston and winning last week. Kudos to the Giants. They're averaging about 18 points per game. But the Giants have still gone about 34, 35 consecutive games without even hitting 30. Uh, points. I don't think it's going to happen in this game. There's still issues on offense. I know they scored 27 last week, but will they even, I, to me, they're going to have to get that in this game. And I understand that the defense on New Orleans might be abhorred. They may be able to get close to that, but they're not, I mean, this game, Giants trying to win in a shootout, it's not going to happen, I don't think. I like the Saints to win this one on the road. I just like their offense better. Next game. I'm going to take the L.A. Chargers at home to defeat the San Francisco 49ers. Now, uh, right now, uh, the Chargers, I mean, they are number five in total offense. I think the team might have been a little overrated and overhyped. They are one and two right now. They're averaging about 27 points per game. As I've stated in previous videos, when you have quarterback Phillip Rivers, you always have an opportunity uh, to win. If they didn't have him... I don't think this team would really have much of a chance at all. But they're right now, they are going to be playing the San Francisco 49ers in Week 4. And Jimmy uh, Garoppolo will be out for the season. Um, I think when you look at it, their running game, they're going to have to try to win this, I think, with running with their running and try to dominate time of possession. Matt uh, Breed is one of the better running backs right now in the NFL. 274 rushing yards. That is the way I think they could get this done. I don't think they're going to win it in a passing duel uh, between their, their second string quarterback and Phillip Rivers. And having to go on a road uh, with Jimmy Garoppolo out, I think it's going to be really a daunting task uh, for this uh, for this offense to do much against the, the Chargers with a, with a quarterback going in uh, second stringer. I just don't see it happening. I think the Chargers get their second win of the season and even their record to 2-2. Two and two. I like the Chargers at home. Well, the next game, I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers at home to defeat the Baltimore Ravens. This game should be very competitive. It might be the best game in terms of as far as which game is the most competitive of all the all the matchups. These teams generally, I believe, do play close games for the most part. Now, Pittsburgh is going on a short week. They will be at home, but I think they're going to be rejuvenated with that win they had 
uh, last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think what they're they're starting to come to a realization. I think with Levy and Bell, and I think the, on the positive end, I think they're at least they understand there there's something definite happening, and they they understand the speculation can be over as far as what's going to happen with him. It does appear that he is going to wind up ultimately going to another team. I think now you're getting maybe some acceptance of that, and they're gonna. I think they're going to be able to block uh, this out when they're playing. Baltimore. Baltimore, the ravenous defense may actually be back number one in total D in the NFL. They're averaging as far as points allowed only 17. Their defense has been very good. It will be good enough, I think, to make this game uh, very close. I do believe it's a divisional game and these games with the Steelers and Baltimore, I mean, they tend to, I do believe they tend to be competitive. I like Pittsburgh, though, at home to win this one in a close battle. Last but not least, I'm going to take the Denver Broncos to, uh, so I'm going to take the Chiefs on the road to defeat the Denver Broncos. Now, the Chiefs, I mean, they're kind of like, they, they resemble the uh, Saints in a way, except they got three wins and the Saints have two. But as far as their their general, their formula for winning is just basically we're going to outscore you. It's just predicating their offense because the defense has not been up to par. But when you have uh, Kelsey and Tyreek Hill and those receivers and Patrick uh, Mahomes, uh, quarterback, playing lights out, 13 touchdowns after three games. They're number seven in passing yards per game, and they're averaging about 39 points per game. The offense has just been outstanding, phenomenal right now. Denver right now has lost five straight to the Chiefs. The Chiefs have dominated this series in recent time. Uh, well, linebacker Von Miller um, really is going to have to have a good game. The, the pass rush is going to have to be exceptional, I think, to have any chance to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And Denver is just number 14 in total D. This is not the Vona defense of seasons past. And they're just number 22 in pass defense. So it's going to be something where they're going out. The, the pass, the defense on Denver is going to have to exceed and surpass expectations What they, as far as in contrast to what they've done uh, in previous weeks. I just don't think they're going to be able to do that. This offense for Kansas City right now is playing uh, lights out, and I think it will continue to do that in this game. I, I do expect them to have a very good game offensively, and it'll be enough for them to beat uh, the Denver Broncos on or on the road. So anyway, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube NFL prediction segment for uh, my 2018 Week Four picks and analysis. And until next time, people, Edwin Leonard saying, stay well.